through the, the book of First Peter, okay? And um, it's been a blessing going over these scriptures during our Bible study on Wednesday evening. What a blessing it's been. We pick up here, we left off here last week, verse 15, but as he which hath called you is, say it, holy. holy. So be ye what? Holy. holy in all, circle the word all, in all manner of conversation. That is life, a conversation, lifestyle. All of it, all, all manner, the way we talk, the way we walk, where we dress, where we go, where we do, do not go, what we watch on TV, what we shouldn't watch, what we listen to the music, what we shouldn't listen to. Uh, holy, in all manner of conversation, how we respond. Um, God wants us to be holy in all manner of life. In all manner of life. Um, I want us, uh, once you pray about it, that God will help us with this, and even me, all of us, we need to start humbling ourselves, folding our hands, bowing our head, and thanking God for the food, whether it be in a restaurant or at home, get in the habit. If we do it at home, we'll do it. We want to be a holy people, friend. We want to be different from the world. And, 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 and I, you know, I, I'm under conviction, and God forgive me, and God forgive you, the sneezing mentality of while the food's coming towards our mouth, thanking God or during it. We're not a bunch of animals, we're not a bunch of pigs. God wants us to be a holy people. But it's going to take work because we have bad habits. We have very bad habits. And sometimes even forgetting to pray. And, and, and they gave thanks and gave praise. Uh, and Jesus did that and showed us as an example. And, but what is it about holding the, um, hand, uh, our hands and bowing our head? It's humility. It's humbleness. Um, can I say this? It will help us. We need to show what's on the inside on the outside. Yes, God does answer prayer when we don't kneel, but we need to practice humbleness, holiness, and uh, from evil, from the world. And uh, let us kneel before the Lord, our makers, Psalms 95, right? I believe it is. You ain't got to turn to it. I believe that's what it is. Um, but let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, all right? And um, holiness, God's looking for holiness in his people, Amen. humbleness, isn't that right? Amen. And so um, I want you to see, it says, so be holy in all manner of conversation. We're sitting out eating, lunchtime, breakfast, supper, wherever it is at, in all our way of life, you see? Amen. Are you understanding? Um this holiness is very, very important. And because it is written, verse 16, be ye what? Holy. holy. Why? See, the children are asking, the reason why they're, they're messing up, they don't, uh, the, the why, teenager. The reason why they're going haywire, they're messing up the why. Why? Adults. People are not understanding the why. That's why we have this contemporary movement where you can hardly tell the difference between um, God's people and the devil's crowd and the way worldly people live is the churches are becoming that way and the music, the dress, um, and doing what the world does. They, they don't really, it's really haven't sunk in. Why shouldn't you drink alcohol? Why, why, why shouldn't you, you know, why shouldn't you uh, take drugs? You say it's bad. But why? Why? People don't understand holiness. People don't understand being like God, how God is. They don't understand his scripture. They don't understand the importance of obedience. Amen. They don't understand the importance of faith. They don't, they, they, they don't, and, 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 and they don't really understand who God is. Now, I'm striving that you may see God in my life. I'm trying. I'm trying. But I'm just a man. I'm, I'm working at him. My sister pastor is working at him. That's why constantly we ask you to read it from Genesis to Revelation because you will see a holy God. So the big mistake is people don't read 
Genesis to Revelation what is written about him. That's why the devil fights you from reading about what's written. Your, your, your biggest battle, it's easy to get up and get on social media. It's easy to get up and, well, it's easy at night to watch a movie. It's easy to do this and do that. But why is it such a task to open up the word of God, get, get some quiet time, and just you and God and let God speak to you? Why? Because there's a devil. Why? Because there's the flesh. Because Satan don't want you holy. The more you read this Bible, it's going to rub off on you. See? If a child of God doesn't dress holy, it's because there's a lack of reading the scriptures and understanding it. Or if they're talking or whatever it is, if it's lying, if it's stealing, whatever it is, you name it. Whatever, smoking cigarettes, you name it. Letting our body be just stinking messed up by food, killing ourselves. I don't care what it is. Hello? If it's adultery, it's a fornication, if it's being a sodomite. Wait a minute, hold it. Why can God sober up a drunkard, the stinking uh, dope addict? Why can't he straighten the mind of a, sodom a sodomite? Hello? God can straighten it out. And they're right. God can do anything. Was, he said they were born that way, wanting to be a girl. He's a boy. No, no, no. God can straighten that out. Amen. You see, they were born this way, wanting to be a boy, and she's a girl. God can straighten. God, God can make the husband what he wants to be. God can make the wife. God can make the children. God can make the parents. Amen. That's a great thing about the Holy Spirit. But this, we got to realize it's written, be, be holy, you see. Um, Leviticus chapter 11. Would you open your Bible, please? Let's turn the pages of the scripture in our Bible study tonight in Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 44. For I am the Lord your God, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be, say it, holy. holy. For I am, say it, holy. holy. Neither shall ye dis defile yourselves with any manner of these creeping things that creepeth upon the earth. Now you're going to get all you're going to read all kind of stuff that God told them what what to do and what not to do. But he was striving to get them not to be worldly, sinful, satanic, barbarous. He wanted them to be a certain type of people. A clean people. We ain't got time to get in all these ceremonial laws. But one thing that has never changed is his moral laws. Now, the ceremonial laws will change. A lot of ceremonial laws you'll see in the Old Testament, you know, will change. But moral laws never change. Moral. Moral. God's a holy God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And it, it, when, when you get into morals, you see, God says, listen, you're, you're a lady, dress ladylike. You're a man, dress manlike. It never changes. He doesn't want to borrow from the devil with the music of the devil, the world, the fashions of the devil. He wants you to be like him, and, the, and, 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 and he, he stresses that constantly through the scripture. Um, chapter 20 of Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 20, Leviticus chapter 20, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26. And ye shall be said, holy unto me. Look at verse 26. For I, the Lord, am what? Holy. And have severed you from the what? Of the people that ye shall be what? Mine. You see, Pastor Barnett, please pay attention. Please, but they say, Pastor Barnett, you ramp and you rave, rave about this stuff. Because I'm, I'm, I'm constantly reminding us God wants us to be holy. Amen. Amen. See, the pastor's wife is supposed to be an example. 
But what you're seeing around the country, pastors' wives wearing pants. The pants came from Marlene Dietrich, Hollywood whore. Look up and look her up. She was not happy with men's, um, with, with uh, ladies' clothing. She wanted men's clothing. And not only her, there's a bunch of rebels that came out back then. In the 40s, never do you see a, a, a woman with um, pants on um, in, the, in the 40s and 50s until later on, they started wearing pants. That's where the question came from. Um, who wears the pants in your house? Well, today, both of them. Well, you say, preacher, they're ladies' pants. Well, w when they get skirts out, you guys are going to start wearing them? They're going to call them guy skirts? You're going to start wearing them? Some of you will. Because you follow the world anyway. Come on, somebody say, man. If they come up with men's dresses, are you going to start wearing them? Of course. Some people will. It's going to happen. It's already happened. You know, you can go on YouTube and look it up. All you got to do is Google stuff. Now, you, you, see, you see the rock groups or whatever. With, with skirts on. Did you get out of stop saying male and female? Stop saying Mr. and Miss? Stop saying the gender? Already college is pushing it. Slapping the face to God. But God's people need to remain holy. But you got to understand why we're a skirt, why we're a dress. And I appreciate Thank God for your respect. Some of you around, uh, you know, your parents or you around your pastor, and and I thank God so much for you, and I, and I appreciate you doing what you can do. But it's it, it's more than that. What we want is you to realize God wants this. It's not just your mom and dad. It's not just your pastor. I want you to understand that. You girls, I want you to understand that. Or well, the first thing you do is when you get back, you're going to get you can get right back into your britches. You see? You see? And by the way, I don't think I'm just preaching, teaching this because you're here. I've been doing this for years. We have a Bible study. I'm still doing it. And I, and I can't change my message because you're here. Amen. So I don't want you to ever think that. Okay? Amen. All right? There's nothing. Not, by the way, this is, this is nothing new to us. I mean, people watch Facebook. I don't watch it much. Uh, people watch um, things on the um, social media. I don't watch it much, but y'all do. You, I mean, you ain't stupid. You ain't stupid. So I'm not talking about anybody personally here. I'm talking about God's people. Okay? The more flesh you show in your thighs and your breasts, it's showing. And by, by the way, by the way, the danger is while you live holy, those pictures are still up there on Facebook. bringing disgrace to God and hurts God and your parents and your pastor. You straighten it up, but it's still up there. I don't know you I, I don't know your social media people. Is it possible to get it out? Or the devil makes it the devil makes it stay up there just like when an earring gets on the ear for the first two weeks, the devil makes it stay. Makes it stay there for two weeks or something about you get corruption, get all sticking dirt in there. Disease. Can't take it out. Adversary. Devil says, you will have it. You're going to have it there for two weeks. Thank God when they get victory over it, they stick and give it to their sister or their mom. Amen. 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 Tell the truth. Amen. Hello. Amen. I mean, does those pictures got to stay up there? I mean, is does the devil make it stay? Brother Leron, is there a way to get them down or they can't come down? Oh, you can get them down? I don't know why some of them still got it up there. Especially if you change. Especially when the earring comes off your ear. Or you stop wearing britches. Showing your thighs and everything else. Come on, talk to me now. And by the way, there's perverts. There's child molesters, rapists. And guess who hurts when you get raped and killed? Daddy. Mama. See, modesty still in the Bible, holiness, Amen. loose, long, and lots of it. Amen. It's not hard. It's not hard, ladies. It's not hard, girls. Is it loose? Is it long? Or is it lots of it? 
the wrong for putting the plane to the Twin Towers, the wrong. They're in hell, I believe. They never got saved. They're in hell. But they went through that Twin Towers, thought they, they, they were doing right to their holy God because Americans say they're holy, but they call them devil, devil's people. You come to my country to put these britches on my girls and these um, tights, leotards, and these um, miniskirts, you come here, we're going to kill you because you know, no, you know nothing about holiness. They think that's holiness. They're in hell. They're in hell. They said, you, you, you're going to make our girls look like these horse looking girls? You're going to make our, and they call their girls holy. That's why they cover their face. That's why they cover all their body. I'm not saying you got to walk around there like this, summer like that. But God says to his people, be holy. Girls, God wants you holy. There's perverts out there. The more you show your flesh, the more they love it. And by the way, these girls know it. That's why they like their behind being tight. That's why that boy sizes his girls up and say, look at my thighs. Look at, my behind, look at the behind of my girl. Look what I got. Look at my trophy. Well, that's a wicked man. I'm not going to advertise my wife that way. She's mine. Not for every wicked man. I don't give a flip for a guy that wants that stuff. Just like the girl says, I want you to wear the, 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 that shirt and show your muscles. And, well, girl, that's supposed to be for you. Amen. That body's supposed to be for you. Read First Corinthians 7. Um, that body is for the, uh, the wife and the, and the body is for the husband. Not for your glory. Not for your honor. Amen. The body is for God Amen. to be glorified. By the way, in this case you think I'm thinking about anybody here in particular, I've been teaching this preaching this for a long time, and I'm going to keep on preaching and teaching it, and I'm going to train our people in the Bible. Amen. And I think every lady in this room has battled with this, every girl in this room has battled with it, and every man has battled with it. Now, thank God some are bold enough to put their earrings on their ears, and they're bold enough to show it, but some of them, what I'm concerned about in the hearts of the ones that want the earring, wish they could have the earring, and thinks it's cool. And in their heart, they have an earring. There's something in them that want to be a little girly. They want to be a little girly something in them something that appeals to them and there's something in that girl that likes it for him to be girly 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 but when he's not a man that he should be and doesn't take care of the bills and he doesn't be a man to help her with the kids she don't want that and when he's not mad enough not to be faithful to her she don't want that girly part it takes a man. It takes a man not to drink like everybody else is drinking. It takes a man not to smoke like everybody else is smoking. It takes a man not to whore around like a bunch of them. It takes a man not to tattoo their body all up like the rest of them. It takes a man to take a stand and to stand alone. Come on, somebody say that. Is there something in some girls where they're not happy until they can be part of like a man? Some of you need to get it. You need to get it. It's a sin nature. It's a sinful nature. You need to get it. There, it's going to shock you. There's something in a man that wants to sleep with a woman and a man at times. Face it. There's something with a woman that wants to sleep with another woman and a man. But God can correct that. 
It is it's a reprobate mind. You got the only cure is God. There's something you got to understand. Is some girls, it's just got to be them. They got to be a, a construction worker. They got to be a. They, 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 they just it's in them. You don't understand it. They they got to be a football player. Or they're not happy. In some cases look like a man or a basketball player. With look, look like boys and men on the court. I know it's all these things accepted today, but God says, I want you holy. I want you holy. But God can fix that. Man, come on. God can help us tell the truth. God can help us say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, please and thank you. Obey our parents. The parents and parents love their children. Husband loves your wives. Wives submit to your husbands. But it's going to take holiness. You gotta, you gotta say why, why, why don't I want to do it? Because God wants to be holy. That's why. That's why. Why, why shouldn't you let your boys play with dolls? Because they be all to be holy. I've been a bunch of girls. Amen. Amen. The girl wants to be a boy, dress like a boy. You know that's what happened. Marlene Diedrich. She was not happy with women's clothing. She wanted men's clothing, so she started wearing breeches. See, she wasn't holy. Now you got to find out where that come from. Where that come? See, some of you are missing the whole thing. He wants a tattoo. Why? Why do you want a tattoo? Why she want a tattoo? Where it come from? What holy person? Where that come from? You got a holy mama. You got a holy daddy. And here's some preacher that wears earrings. Where did that come from? You got to figure out where the origin came from. Amen. Where it come from? Where, where did the bikinis come from? You, you'll get on the beach half naked, show your cleavage. Where did that come from? Did it come from holy people? Hello? We got to figure out where this come from. Where that style come from? And so... God wants his people to be holy. You see? Holy. Turn to Isaiah chapter 57, please. Turn to Isaiah chapter 57. We're living in a day where there's no shame, friends. We're living in a day and age where there's no, no shame. Isaiah in chapter 57. Thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is saith, holy. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. For, th for thus saith the high and what? Lofty one that what? And inhabiteth eternity, whose name is? Holy, high and lofty one, lifted up, the vision. He's a holy God. He's never sinned. He's never lied. He never had an evil thought. He never stole. He's never dressed wrong. He never talked wrong. He never got angry in the wrong way. He's the only sinless, spotless one. Amen. He has a place called heaven where there's none of this going on, where we're going, where we're going. We're headed towards it. Streets of gold, mansions bright, Amen. hung on a cross, nails in his hands, nails in his feet, a God, a God, a holy God Amen. that loves you, hates your sin, loves you, hates your sin. You see, what helped me, I said, Sister Barnett, when we were dating, I said, no. Nah, it was tough. It was tough. But I said, look, and she said, look, we're going to wait to after marriage for this um, romance. Amen. That's tough. That's very tough. Amen. Very, very tough. And, and I'll tell you, the Holy Spirit of God convicted us. Yeah. Convicted us. You know? 
And I started thinking about Jesus hanging on the cross, hanging there with nails in his hands, blood all over. Do you think I could have sex with my girlfriend with that on my mind? You need to get it on your mind. You need to get it on your mind. You'll never get victory over it until you get it on your mind to be holy. You will sleep with your boyfriend. You will sleep with your girlfriend. And by the way, I have nothing wrong with you wanting to be like some of these young people waiting on God and you don't want to get married. I ain't getting married. Okay, okay. As long as you, you don't be a whoremonger, a whore. Amen. Amen. Because um, Hebrews chapter 12 uh, says marriage is honorable and all, the bed and the file, but whoremongers and adulterers got to judge. Amen. So if somebody's in the bed and they're defiled, according to the Bible, they're a whore. They're a whoremonger. You say boyfriend and girlfriend, whoremongers. It's Bible. It's the opposite of holiness. And God will judge. Not on your time, but his time. And guess who gets hurt? Your parents, your pastor, your church. God. Old men who are mugging around some of them. Old ones. There's some pervert old men, old people. Pornography. See, see, pornography. They'll never get victory over pornography and sexting until they realize how holy God is. You will never send a secret part on the on, on on the phone. You will never send a secret part of your body if you understand holiness. Never. Never. And holiness comes by the Holy Spirit. And holy, this comes by reading your Bible, Genesis and Revelation. Some of you haven't meditated on the Bible yet today. This is the first time. This is the first time. This is the first time. You ain't listened to it. You can get it on your phone. You haven't read it. And you wonder why you're struggling. God robbers. Now God can kill. Lieutenant walks in here and, and do you want waddles of 20s. 400. I see that guy walking on the street barefooted. Now, he's looking better now. He was in the military, called himself a lieutenant. Okay? And, um, and, and sometimes it was foreign money. I, what's as good as this foreign money? Took it down to Regents Bank. They transferred it over to American money. Amen. Amen. I asked him for everybody. I said, what is it? You know, one thing he got, something's wrong with his mind, but he hasn't forgotten about giving. I said it for an old class. I said, Lieutenant, I called Lieutenant. He said, from Fort Bragg. So, you know, I don't know what happened there. Something happened in war, most likely. Something. I'm just guessing. I don't know. I don't know the situation. He looked terrible. But you see him right back there, man. That guy's looking clean cut. He was one of the first ones here in Sunday school, waiting outside. I said, Lieutenant, what you giving? Where did you get that from? He says, Sir, I seen death. I fear him. Amen. Amen. And God's people need a holy fear. Amen. Tithe is God's. Amen. Amen. It's holy. Amen. That's the only reason why you're looking on your phone. You can, it is distraction of the devil. Distraction. Because the devil, he, 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 don't want, he don't want you holy. He don't want you, he don't want you blessed. That's why you, you, you have a problem with that looking on your phones. It's an addiction. It's like a crackhead. You got to understand that. It controls you. You control it. Amen. I mean, Ananias of fire was struck dead. And I thank God he don't do it today right away because we all have a bunch of dead bodies around here. I thank God for every one of you that you know about tithing and giving but the whole, it's a holy thing. Tithing and giving is a holy thing. Amen. God said it will, will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. There won't be room enough to receive it. And he says, I'll rebuke the devourer. Amen. 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 It, it helps us to be holy. Amen. I said it will help. 
Just because you tithe and give doesn't mean that you're holy. Some people have done the most wicked things after they tithe and after they give. Sad. You know, at least you're going to tithe and give. Get the blessing. All of it. Now, I would say this. Once you get that tithing and giving settled, he can help you with the other things. But those other things will not be straightened out to your tithe and give. You wear pants, how's your tithe and giving? You were you were you were your short shorts on your thighs. How's your tithe? And by the way, some of those shorts, all they are is long pants anyway. So be careful with that. Some of that is just a cover up. You don't want to wear 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 a modest dress, a modest skirt in public, and look like a holy girl. We're at the amusement park, and I said, "There they are, Christians." I'm gonna go up to them. I can tell the way to dress. Striving to look like a holy girl, holy lady. They said, we're Christians. We're from church. And you know it, too. You know it, too. You've been to them. I'll tell you what. Thank God for the fun. <laughs> Everyone else been to the amusement parks. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my brother, you're talking about a crowd, man. I look at him being around that stuff. Buddy, I'll tell you, one day per year to per decade. I'm talking about these girls. I was like, ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Man, come on, guys. Don't act all spiritual. Those girls know what they're doing. Turn your head. And these girls know what they're doing. Hello. I love it in Walmart. I walk up to them. I says, and what church you go to? got to be careful, though. One of them said a Jehovah Witness. <laughs> At least the Kingdom Hall got Joe Witness and some of them got more sense than some of these Christian girls. <laughs> I tell you what, you got to be careful with it. <laughs> Where do you dress? It's showing on the inside. They cannot see holiness. They cannot see God unless you show it on the outside. Okay? These pastors need to know that. You see? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Uh, Leviticus 19. Leviticus chapter 19, if you will. Leviticus chapter 19. And by the way, don't think I'm shooting at anybody specific. We all need this. I need it. Okay? We all been guilty or are guilty. Somebody say amen there. So ain't nobody shooting at nobody tonight, okay? I just can't change my message when you start doing these things. Huh, you ask Mings. You ask Liz. I've been preaching this stuff since from, from the nursery. Matter of fact, some of them said he ain't changing. You might as well just leave the church, okay? The person that said that, a ask them, um, are you paying child out of wedlock? I mean, are you, paying, are you paying child support? The person that says, hey, if you don't like it, he ain't changing, and, um, you know, um, you, you can leave there. You ain't got to hear it. Ask them, are you paying any alimony? So you been to jail yet? How's it going? Baby's daddy, mama, two, three. You're on your way to four. Come on, ask me. A man ever slapped you yet? Your boyfriend ever slapped you yet? Have you slapped him? Have you cried over any boy yet? Any man? You've been hurt? Don't look at your phone. Look at your heart. Don't look at your phone. Look at your heart. Why don't you care enough about these little girls, little boys that are growing up, going to face some stinking hell? Ask him, you've been raped yet? You've been killed, you've been almost killed yet? Don't look at me all stupid. Talking to you boys too, want these hell girls with their tight britches on. You want these hell girls showing half their breasts and thighs. Look up here! Look up here! Your face is not for some pretty girl! Your face is not for some pretty girl! Your face is to glorify God in the dress, in a way, in a manner that will bring holiness. Unless you be like Samson, get your eyes plucked out. 
Look up here. Ain't time to pray yet. You need to find out what your body's for. Glorify God in holiness. And you're the very one that I'm coming after. Say, whoa, come on. Holy garments. You got holy garments at home. You got them. It's a holy church. It's a holy God. Amen, Pastor Bert, amen. I love you. <laughs> man, I'm just trying to get us holy, man. America's just about to be taken over by China. We're just about to be taken over Russia. I'm sticking plague. When is it going to take for us to straighten up and to be a holy people? Amen. Amen. I mean, what do you want? China in our backyard? Come on. Man, what is it going to take? Man, if this virus people don't straighten up. Thank God I don't have it. Thank God you ain't got it. Thank God you're not dying. Thank God he spared us. Man, this thing on holiness, I haven't arrived. I'm striving to be as holy as he want me to be. It takes an effort. But I want to do it for the Lord. I want to have my kids if it wasn't for God. I want to have this church if it wasn't for the Lord. I wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for God. How can people that make money rob him of his tithe and offerings? How can people do that? You say, how? Easy. You get out of this Bible. You get out of this book. You may kill somebody. There's people in prison that kill people. There's preachers in prison sleeping with teenage girls. Stealing. Don't ever say what you won't do. You pray, God, help you be holy. They're breaking their wife's heart. They're breaking their husband's heart. And back to what I said about some of them saying, I'm not going to get married. And I refuse to be. By the way, it says in the last days, there will be those that forbid to get married. They're going to shack up, but they're not going to get married. They're going to have sex, but they're not going to be married. They refuse. I ain't having no husband. They lock it in. But they want to whore around. People want to drive, but they don't want to get their license. People want to go fish, fishing, but they don't want the fishing license. People want to go kill and dare, but they don't want nobody telling them they got to get a license. And today, people don't want to get married. And they forbid. I don't care what the parent says. I don't care. And by the way, you want to be like these young people, want to be single? Good. But you remember, you remember 1 Corinthians 7 it says to avoid fornication, let a person have their own husband and wife. You're going to live with somebody all that time. You ought to make them your husband. What are you waiting for? What about your daughter? What about your son? Come on, what about your church? What about the Holy God? And don't you do him dirty and live off him and live in that house and go stick and see another guy and flirt with another guy. Don't you do it. Especially when somebody's sick. Especially when somebody's getting old. He may be old. He's looking like your daddy, but marry him. If you're going to keep on living with him. Kids are watching you. Your daughter's going to get hurt. Your son's going to get hurt. So preacher, you saw I'm mad tonight. I'm mad at the devil. That'll help you get rid of the stick and dope, reefer, Amen. liquor. God pity you. God pity you. You say, I got bills. God got bills. God got mortgages. God got insurance. God got gas. Somebody help me out. Got a food pantry we feed people. And the very ones that will be hitting up for the food pantry, come on, help me out now. And go eat up all their food stamps and Oreos and everything else. <laughs> Won't bring an Oreo to the house of God for, for, for a bus kid. Somebody help me out. 
<laughs> Got meats and steaks and everything else off the government. Somebody help me. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yeah, there's so much here. You guys got my about to close. I'm, it is, it, it is, it is uh, so much to be said. I, I just want us to be a holy people. I'm not mad at anybody. I, I just, God, God wants us to be a holy priesthood. Isn't that right? Very quickly, very quickly, go back to First Peter chapter 2, very quickly. We're going to close. Thank you so much. Understand I love you. Thank you, sir. First Peter chapter two and verse five. Ye also as what? Lively stones are what? Built up a what? A spiritual house. And, and what? Holy priesthood. To offer up what? Spiritual sacrifices. Now underline this. This is very important. Acceptable to what? The Joel Osteens, all that garbage. T.D. Jake, Chriswell Dollar. Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. Guys with corn braids and with the musicians going down their back, long hair men. Ain't acceptable. Don't accept it. Contemporary. That church. All that. Yeah! 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 On screen. It's not acceptable. Britches on the girls. Church service, woman preachers, huh? We'll preach like men. First Corinthians chapter fourteen. You know what the Bible says? Don't supposed to be speaking. Don't supposed to do the preaching. First Timothy chapter two. You know what the Bible says? You know what the Bible says? Don't supposed to be a suffering authority over the man. You know it. I don't care how much money that church gives. I don't, somebody help me. We need holiness in the house of God in our country in our nation. We need some husbands that will look at a man behind the pulpit, not not some woman that's trying to help him to be a husband. Bishop ought to be the husband of one wife. That's not holiness when that woman gets up. And I don't care how many are doing it. I want to be holy. I'm striving to be holy. Have you, have you um, arrived? No, I'm striving to be holy. I'm striving. Why are you going to kiss that girl, boy? Why are you going to kiss her on the lips? Why? Why, boy? Amen. Why, girl? Well, amen. When he brings them lips to your face, I want you to say, I got to be holy. Amen. Amen. We'll do this at the marriage altar. Come on, man. Amen, pastor. Amen. amen. I now pronounce you, pronounce you Husband and wife. <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. I now pronounce you <laughs> husband, not boyfriend and girlfriend. Not girly with girly. Not boily with boily. And I don't care two guys, I don't care how much you think you could be a husband. Of, <laughs> I, don't think, I, I don't care how much you can think you could be a wife, husband, man. <laughs> two men at the altar. Which one is the wife? <laughs> Two ladies. Two ladies. They're getting married. Can I ask you a question on these females? Which one is the husband? The one with the army boots. Which one is the husband? The one with the army pants. Which one is the husband? 
the one with the police officer man's pants? Which one is the husband? The one that wants to be governor? Which one is the husband? The one wants to be president? And get this, the homo president wants you to say, this is the, <laughs> not the first lady. It's the first man. It's that holiness, friends. Our country's going down the tubes. Young girls, you've been taught right. Young boys, you've been taught right. You got a Christian heritage. And I know it costs a lot, but God will bless you for holiness. Guess what's going to happen, dear lady? Guess what's going to happen? God's going to give you a holy man. Amen. Hey, dear lady, guess, what's God, God, God's gonna, guess what? He's going to give you a holy man. Hey, girls, God's going to give you a holy man. You say, what's a holy man? One that treats you right. Amen. Amen. One that won't break your heart. Amen. One that won't hurt you. But this is the problem. You get an unholy girl. Guess what guess who she gets as a boyfriend? She settles for an unholy boyfriend. You, you're worth more than that. You're, you're more, more valuable than that. Don't you listen to the devil. You deserve the best. Amen. Hey, boy, trying to help you. You get an unholy boy. Guess what you get as a girlfriend? Unless you're very blessed to be like me. I met a girl. Immediately, I got with it. Immediately, I got with it. And we started doing it together. In church together, serving God together. And we're still together. God's blessed us with 12 wonderful children of pastor in the church. Hello. It sure pays off. It pays off. And I'll tell you what, these years, I thank God we're not divorced. And they're getting divorced now a year, two years. And by the way, these ones that just got married, you pray for them. And by the way, I, I have no, hey, hey, I'd be scared to look at these divorces. But I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'll be more scared if I were you if you're going to stick and whore around. You better thank God you ain't got no sexual transmitted disease. You better thank God you ain't dead. Amen. Caught a preacher naked in bed with a woman. That wasn't his wife. What a way to go. Hope you don't go that way. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Holiness unto God. Isn't that right? Father, I love these people. I thank you for them. And I ask you that you help us to.